Nigeria, Africa's most populous nation, is caught in the throes of an economic crisis that has left its citizens struggling with skyrocketing prices of food, fuel, and medicine. The paradox lies in the country's simultaneous pursuit of an ambitious airport expansion project, even as its people endure severe economic hardships. This juxtaposition raises critical questions about the direction of Nigeria's economic policies and the rationale behind its infrastructure investments. Nigeria's economy is facing unprecedented challenges. Inflation has surged to levels not seen in a generation, making everyday necessities increasingly unaffordable. The cost of food, fuel, and medicine has risen sharply, pushing more Nigerians into poverty. The economic strain has sparked widespread discontent and criticism of President Bola Tinubu's economic reforms, which many argue have deepened the crisis. Tinubu's administration has undertaken significant reforms aimed at stabilizing the economy, including the removal of fuel subsidies and the unification of exchange rates. While these measures are intended to address fiscal imbalances and attract foreign investment, they have also led to immediate hardships for ordinary Nigerians. The removal of fuel subsidies, for instance, caused fuel prices to skyrocket, leading to increased transportation and production costs, which have been passed on to consumers. Amidst this economic turmoil, Nigeria has embarked on an airport construction spree. New airports are being built across the country, even in some of the poorest states. Just last month, Zamfara, one of Nigeria's most impoverished regions, held a ceremony to mark the beginning of an international airport in its capital, Guseo. This move is part of a broader trend that has seen the number of airports in Nigeria rise to 33, with more in the pipeline. At first glance, the construction of new airports might seem like a positive step towards economic development. Airports are typically seen as catalysts for growth, facilitating trade, tourism, and investment. However, Nigeria's case presents a complex picture. Out of the existing 33 airports, only three accounted for 92% of all passenger journeys in 2022. The number of air passengers has been declining, dropping to 15.8 million last year from 16.11 million in 2021. This decline in passenger traffic raises questions about the viability of these new airports and their potential impact on the economy. Critics argue that the airport construction spree reflects misplaced priorities in a time of economic crisis. With essential services like healthcare, education, and infrastructure in dire need of funding, the investment in new airports appears incongruous. The Tinubu administration has defended these projects as part of a broader strategy to improve social amenities and stimulate economic growth. However, many Nigerians remain unconvinced, viewing the airport projects as symbols of political prestige rather than practical economic development. In some regions, state governments have opened airports only to struggle with their maintenance. For instance, Ekiti State spent around $24 million to build an airport, but soon after its completion, an additional $9 million was required to repair its barely used runway. In May this year, the federal government had to take over the facility, further straining public resources. The high cost of air travel in Nigeria adds another layer of complexity to the situation. Airfares have doubled in the past three years, making air travel increasingly unaffordable for many Nigerians. The fares are further burdened by multiple taxes and high service charges imposed by government agencies. Both Lagos and Abuja airports, for example, have a $100 per passenger service charge, one of the highest globally. This combination of high costs and declining passenger numbers raises serious doubts about the sustainability of the new airports. The Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria has provided a stark assessment of the viability of Nigeria's airports. According to Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria's Managing Director, Olubun Maikuku, only three of Nigeria's 22 international and domestic airports are profitable. The other 19 airports are heavily subsidized, as they do not receive passenger traffic sufficient to cover their operational costs. Many of these airports require significant upgrades to critical infrastructure, including terminals and runways, many of which have exceeded their 20-year validity periods and are due for upgrades. For President Tainubu, the airport projects are both a matter of prestige and passion. Known as one of Africa's flying presidents, Tainubu 
has faced severe criticism for his frequent trips abroad. In the first six months of his presidency, he reportedly spent at least $2.2 million on domestic and foreign travel, 36% more than the budgeted amount for 2023. The opposition has derisively referred to him as a tourist in chief, highlighting the contrast between his frequent travels and the economic hardships faced by ordinary Nigerians. The Nigerian presidency maintains that these trips are crucial for attracting foreign investment and fostering international relationships. However, the high cost of these travels, coupled with the investment in new airports, has fueled public resentment and raised questions about the administration's commitment to addressing the country's economic challenges. Despite the criticisms, airports can play a significant role in economic development if managed and utilized effectively. They serve as gateways to international trade, tourism, and investment, potentially driving economic growth in their surrounding regions. For Nigeria, the challenge lies in ensuring that its airports are not just symbols of political prestige, but are integrated into a broader strategy for sustainable economic development. One potential benefit of the new airports could be the development of regional hubs that facilitate domestic and international trade. By improving connectivity, these airports could help to integrate Nigeria's economy more closely with global markets, attracting foreign investment and promoting tourism. However, achieving these goals will require careful planning, effective management, and substantial investment in complementary infrastructure and services. Nigeria can draw lessons from other countries that have successfully leveraged airport development to drive economic growth. For example, Dubai's transformation into a global aviation hub has been a key driver of its economic success. The development of world-class airports, combined with strategic investments in tourism, trade, and infrastructure, has helped to position Dubai as a major global business and travel destination. Similarly, Singapore's Changi Airport is a prime example of how effective airport management and strategic planning can contribute to economic development. Changi Airport is consistently ranked among the best in the world, attracting millions of passengers and significant investment to Singapore. The airport's success is built on a foundation of excellent infrastructure, efficient operations, and a focus on customer experience. The future of Nigeria's airports will depend on the government's ability to balance immediate economic needs with long-term development goals. While the construction of new airports has the potential to drive economic growth, it must be accompanied by broader efforts to improve the overall business environment, attract investment, and enhance the quality of life for ordinary Nigerians. Thank you for joining us. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to Africa Info Hub for more insights into Africa's geopolitics, economy, and changing landscape.